okay. <laughs> I thought it was counting down. Apparently, it was counting up. <laughs> Welcome to comic book school. I will be your substitute teacher today. I would write my name on the board, but um, I have no there idea no how to board. do that in a video. Yeah, I have no idea how to do this in a video podcast thing and a streaming. Anyway, um, you will all, all of the folks there will be so excited or disappointed to learn that Mike is actually wearing pants and not a robe. Yeah, it, it only happens now and then. It, it's like a special treat for everybody when the robe comes on. Oh, okay, we thought it was a special treat for everybody when the pants come on. Oh, uh, well, the pants are never on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway... The buddy had to be someplace today. So again, I'm the substitute teacher here at comic book school. Welcome. Uh, yes. So, so, and as uh, I'm leading into the substitute teacher joke, so, um, but as, as, as every good substitute teacher goes, they go around the room and make everybody say the name and tell them a little bit about yourselves. Yeah. So let's see who you, you go, Mike. Okay, uh, Mike Fasolo. I'm a writer on the the show Robot Chicken, mm -hmm. as well as a few other shows here and there. Um, yeah, that's really about it. I have I have a couple Emmys. I have a robe that I wear occasionally. Um, there you go. That's that's basically it. That's exciting. Now, Robot Chicken, mm -hmm. do we know where that name it, it, Um, That always makes me think of that famous chicken down from Chinatown. Do you know the one I'm talking about? I do not. It would be in the window, and he would be pecking at numbers, and people would be betting on the numbers of the chicken. I have never seen that. I no. guess they don't get to Chinatown enough. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is not the Robot Chicken that I know of. You know, but hey. But you do you know where the robot chicken came from? You got no clue. They didn't talk to you about it. Uh, they didn't say, hey, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's rumors that it's come from different places, but, you know, who knows about rumors? That's why they're rumors. They're always true. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So. So I like uh, this comment that we have. The substitute teacher in comic class, everyone doodles. Yep, that's true. So, if I understand Mr. Calera's, Mr. Sc <laughs> I'm doing great. If I understand Mr. Scalera's um, schedule, we start off with, yeah, two, three minutes talking about you. Well, it's and usually then, about you. You're supposed to talk about yourself a little bit, who you are, where you're from, why you're, co why you're, you're temporary hosting, why I'm things like why that. I'm oh, I was okay. going to say co-hosting, but you know. I have that honor of the temporary co-host. Aww. <laughs> um, okay. Go ahead. I'm Ruth. Go. Hi. Hi. I've known Buddy for a minute. Um, he and I, uh, I do a show at comnation.com. Usually try to do weekly, but I took a couple weeks off. But ours is usually about trivia, although it is comic book trivia. Um, and you know, yeah, I've known, I'm, I, I, I met Mike years and years ago, but he doesn't remember me. I don't, I'm sorry. Where did we meet? <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast, so you shouldn't feel bad. It's, it's just, it was a... pancakes, Mike. It was pancakes. Okay. No, um, no, it was just the wizard, you know, when I would, I, I think it was at wizard world, but moving on. Oh, look. look so, yeah. Look oh. what? <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to be wearing this shirt. I just, just, yeah. There we go. So, also, anyway, the, yeah. the show, the shirt, shirt is about 15 years old, probably more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So am I. <laughs> um, anyway. Oh, is this the part where we're drinking? Yeah. So anyway, we know about you, Emmy Award-winning robe wearer. Mm -hmm. um, 
You are a very special guest. Very, very special. Do you feel special? Have I made you feel special? You have. Should yes. I try to figure out a way to write your name on? I would have um, thought that you would have had that figured out by now, but you know. Yeah. Well, you know. Um. So, again, with according to Mr. Scalera's lesson plan, we start with the little intro of you. We start with the little intro of me. And where do we go from there? I don't know. Weren't you supposed to? Did you do your homework, Michael? I, I never do my homework. I, I work. I, I do this show with Buddy once a week, and I'm never prepared, ever. And frequently in the robe. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Frequently, occasionally. So, all right. Well, how did you get started? Like, because you got you started you started your comic book career. <laughs> Oops. Pay no attention. You pay, shush. You pay. You started your comic career working for Wizard, the Wizard Group, right? I did Wizard Magazine way back in 1995, yeah. I think, four or five, one of those mid to late 90 years. And and then you started working from there to Inquest. I went from there to Inquest. Um, then I actually went back to Wizard. For a little while um as a editor jumped back and forth a lot um and then surprisingly i went from wizard to the accounting department at wizard yeah shocking i know do you have an accounting degree i absolutely do not but we went to one of these conventions where i got this shirt and i was uh running one of the credit card machines. And when I came back, they were like, hey, you ran that credit card machine pretty good. So you must be an accountant. And I was like, uh, no, but they were going to continue to pay me and let me still work there. And I was like, OK, I'll, I'll do that. So I did the accounting for a while. I was terrible at it. Uh, and I also then, did so you naturally go from accounting to robot chicken i see it yeah see how it goes yes this was this was <laughs> this was before the uh the uh robot chicken thing got started it was it was in the in the early works in the early beginnings beginnings of it and you know uh i didn't really want to be an accountant but i still remained friends with all the it, it, as we called always... them the downstairs people because the accounting, accounting department was always... upstairs the accounting uh, department that seems super glamorous yeah it was but yeah so skip ahead and uh they they Mark. sold yeah, yeah. Keep they, going. they sold robot chicken no but but how did you get that it's just like was it like hey i'm your accountant but i have all this accounting experience well so since i was downstairs I should... so long yeah. with uh, with the editors and the the writers and all that i was still friends with them and when they started Robot Chicken and they're like, hey, we're going out to California. They were like, why don't you come out and write with us? And I said, sure. So we all jumped in the car and we drove out here. And it's that easy. It, it is. It's exactly that easy. All you got to do is get some friends who sell a show. And uh, yeah, they'll they'll put you on it. So the secret to your success is um, basically make sure your friends get paid and then they'll like you yeah maybe pay them to like you to like you yeah so yeah it was uh, i don't i don't have the usual um you know hard tale of i came out here all by myself and i struggled my way up the ladder and i and you to... sold cartoon story ideas yeah. on street corners yeah. <laughs> knocking on doors nothing like that nope <laughs> They uh, they had the show up and ready. They were like, uh, "You're gonna be writing," and I was like, "Okay." And then you know that's that's how it all began. That was way back in 2004. We came out here. Now yeah. I had heard, and tell me if this is true. I had heard um, from a couple of folks that I comic that I kind of know who sort of have a situation is that there is you have to learn the technicals, right? Wrong. Um, I mean, there's like, I, you know, do you, do you, I mean, 
like how do you format the script you know was it just like hey you know how do you lay it out there's like a technical you know you did have to learn something right yeah i mean but I, just, i've been writing did you pantomime at all i did i i yeah. had a fake board behind me and i would just okay. pretend <laughs> I think I'm doing no, but you had been writing what you've been writing. I've been writing. I've been department. writing uh, scripts and and you know TV shows and things like that. So I knew you know how to format a, a script. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I mean that that part was actually very simple. Very simple. Okay. Um, but yeah, we you know we sit down. I can give you the the layout of how we run ro the robot chicken room. Yeah. Which is which is not. You sit down. Most yeah. people are wearing pants. Most are, not everybody. Not you. Not, not, You're not everybody. in your robe. Yeah, and it's it's um, you know when you think of the robot chicken room with the way the show is and and uh, what you see on the screen, you would probably think that it's a very crazy, rambunctious, off the wall room where everybody's just throwing out ideas and shoveling candy and jelly beans in their face to get the sugar high. But it's it is nothing like that at all. It You're is, eating kale. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're very we're all vegetarian. Um, it's just a really <laughs> boring room. There's usually six to eight or nine of us sometimes sitting around a table and we're all just typing. We just, just type, type all Are day. Are you typing to each other? No, nope, we're all, we have to do so many, the way the room works, we have to have so many ideas in by the end of the day that mm -hmm. we all have to just sit and come up with our own ideas. So it's not like we can even collaborate on one idea throughout the room. Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to hit your quota, and our quota is, there... is usually. Go ahead, but yeah, no, no. Figure it. your quota is what? Our quota is usually about four uh, longer sketches, and you know maybe ten to fifteen channel flips. So, a couple things. First of all, is it seriously that you make it sound so not you make? You made accounting sound more glamorous because you yeah. make it sound like, oh, I just got to get it done. Like you got to clock in at nine in the morning and then you just get it done. It's really that. I mean, I can, you know. Yeah, it's because, um, you know, in a regular TV show, like a regular series, you're breaking, you know, an episode. Say you're doing like a Breaking Bad episode. You know that over the course of the season, Walter is going to go from point A to point B. And in... You know, this particular episode, he's going to get uh, hooked up with some drug dealer and something terrible is going to happen. And by the end, he'll be kicked out of his house. So everybody can sit around the table and break that story and what, yeah. what they're going to do and how they're going to. But for this, it's all just, all ideas are just random. There's no ever storyline. And it's just us coming up with the wackiest things and funniest things we can think of. So you're kind of all in your head. If you have a, you know, a question like, you know, how much can Superman lift? You can throw it out to the room and they can, um, you know, do their best to answer you. What was that? A lot. Yes, he can lift quite a lot. Not quite as much as the Hulk, but he can. You know, lift. my trivia show, one of the questions one time we were doing an Aquaman, it was how fast can Aquaman, show, uh, can Aquaman swim? Because this is comic books, y'all. Somebody figured it out, wrote it down and published it. I would say he can swim at Mach 10. No comment. <laughs> oh, do you know, or you just don't want to answer? I'm trying to remember, but it was like it, it was. It was. I think it was like Mach three, three or something. Like, I know. I don't remember. Hmm. I don't have my notes in front of me. I didn't know there was going to be a pop quiz. Yeah, this you should have been prepared. Teacher, substitute teacher. That's Everybody terrible. knows. Like two guys in the back switch the serve seats and call each other by each other's names. You know. Oh. Yeah, those guys. Hate those guys. Hate You were those guys. <laughs> Could have been. Okay. So um about so you're in charge of coming up with idea after idea after idea after idea. How many percentage wise? Like thirty percent, ten percent, mock eight? I would, I would say maybe thirty percent. Yeah, because yeah, then accepted, rejected. Ex oh, oh, yeah, it's much, much more rejected. There's probably about seventy percent rejection because there's we all get to vote on what at the end of the day after we turn in all our ideas. Uh, everybody sits down, they read them, and they're all submitted. I, I collect all the ideas and I submit them, you know, anonymously, like in one big packet with 
no real distinction to them. So nobody knows who wrote what, except their own sketches. And then we sit down, we read them, and we vote what goes in and what doesn't. And it's uh, a basic majority rule. And uh, those that go in, you, you go, you get your little gold star for the day. Hey! And uh, no, you know, those that get rejected, you can resubmit if you want to. Um, but that's not always the case. And uh, yeah, then at the end of the cycle, which runs two and a half weeks to write, um, then once all those are uh, packaged together, then we sit down, we start breaking out the scripts. And that's when that's when we do the collaboration. We throw it up on the big screen and everybody gives their comments on how, uh, how awesome things are. So to be clear, uh, or just because this is really important, 150 miles per hour. That's it? That's how fast Aquaman can swim, apparently. He should be able to swim faster than that. He, it, it, it's OK. Really? How fast can you swim, Michael? I can swim uh, about a mile an hour. OK. Is this with or without the rope? <laughs> this is without the rope, because the rope just, it's a terry cloth rope, so it just weighs you down. OK. Um, OK. So it does, I mean, it sounds kind of brutal. You it know, is getting rejected over and over and oh, over yes. and over and over and over and over again. Yep, it's uh, it leads to some anger issues. But you know, after doing it for so long, you you build up a thick skin and you just move on. You're like, okay, they didn't like it, that's okay. And if it isn't really a, a sketch that you're really really attached to, it doesn't matter. But if you do like it, you are allowed to, like I said, resubmit. You can change the ending, change stuff around, make it funnier, and did, put it back did, in. Do you get it with notes? Does it say, hey, I like this except for, and therefore I'm rejecting it? You know. There are there are some notes. I mean, we're all sitting around the table just talking about them. So it's like, oh, this was funny here, or this got stupid here, or it just dragged on too long. Yeah, there's 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 notes and things that you could uh, fix and tweak and, and do whatever you want to do. Yeah. 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 And is ever do you ever get to sort of jump on somebody else's and say, "Hey, wait! I know a way to make yours funnier." Oh yeah, yeah. When we're all uh, doing yeah? the, the notes, you can do that, or you can wait until the the scripting phase and then throw in your your genius ideas, Emmy winning ideas, I should say, and uh, yeah, see see what everybody thinks about it. And yeah, then it's a big collaboration, and uh, finally the scripts are done. And then the fun part comes after the scripts are done. Uh, we get to write all the sketches up on the board and uh, we see which ones that eventually we have to cut for page length and timing and things like that. So even after you, even if you make your, your way through the whole process at the very end, your, your sketch can get cut. That's heartbreaking. Oh yeah. That's sad. That's a sad day. Mike, Unless I'm everybody ready. else's sketches get cut. Then it's a, that's a good day. I believe the voice of God. Yeah, go. I, I was going to say, I have a very important question for Mike. Doesn't yes. Aquaman swim in knots, not miles per hour? Uh, I leave that for you both to debate. <laughs> well, you know, knots and miles per hour can be, you know, worked back and forth. He swims from <laughs> here to there. <laughs> in the amount of time. I <laughs> and, he, and I, you know, for about 150 miles per hour. Although, allegedly, this is like the average. There's apparently, okay, I just did a quick internet search. But apparently in some universe, in some situations, you know, he can swim faster. And, hmm. I think 100, whatever it is, 130, 150 knots or miles an hour is way too slow for Aquaman. Way too slow. That's now, I do have news for you guys. You guys want some comic book news? Because I know Buddy does the comic book news, so I dragged some up for you guys. Yeah. All right. So let me, let me show off what's happening in the comic book industry this week that made the biggest splash. Here we go. Splash. Awesome, oh, I like man. that. I like how you did that. Right? Nice pun, right? Threw that in there. <laughs> Way to go. Here you go. Your first bit of news. This comic, oh, the first, yeah, the first ever uh, Marvel comic book sells for over two point four million dollars. Discuss. Uh, yep. 
They, they, they outbid me. They outbid me by uh, about two point three point two point four million dollars. <laughs> but you wanted it. You wanted it bad. I, you know, it's good. It's I'm now that we get further and further and further into the electronic age. Um, you know, comicsology and webtoons and um, all of that. I. I am not as excited about the paper products. I'm excited about the book. I'm excited about the story, but I actually, I, I'm sorry. I enjoy just reading it. I don't need to feel the paper, but that's me. Well, I don't know. I, I've never even seen that first Marvel comic before. And if I had to guess, <laughs> I would say the story is terrible. Uh, my recollection is, doesn't it have one of the, um, I'm trying to remember the story, but. There's a, there's a guy with a gun. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, that's not good. And he's shooting somebody that looks like a, is that a fire guy? Yeah. Wasn't the fire guy one of the first Marvel characters? I don't know. The human torch. Okay. Is it body. possible for us to do a poll, go around the room, <laughs> class? Class, <laughs> who likes paper? Who likes digital? Class, show of hands. Um, yeah, hands might be tough, except for this. Uh, I, I kind of prefer paper, kind of. Yeah, I thought it was the original Human Torch. We were on like three Thanks, iterations Siebert. of the Human Torch, two. Yeah, it's the robotic one. This is the one that's yeah. a robot, not uh, the Fantastic Four. Yeah. And I think Stan Lee said it best when he said that comics are, are like female, um, the female chest. It's better to be held and, and touched and appreciated that way instead of just looking at it. That's a quote from Stan Lee. That's Take Stan Lee's me. words. Oh, somebody's going to the principal's office. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. I always have been there. They have a seat for me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, um, I'm old enough to remember when, yes, yeah, paper and paychecks from digital. I'm old enough to remember um, when this controversy was first hitting music, when vinyl and CD started to go the way of streaming and people were like, it changes the sound quality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, and you know, if you get good quality paper that's like good and clean, and especially, you know, Mike, uh, you may or may not be old enough to remember when the, they went to the nicer paper as opposed to that sort of newsprinty paper. Of course, of course. Yeah, the paper that they do it on now is so expensive. It's great, but um, but you know. Yeah. Well, now comics are but like the old comics that sort of smell like your basement. <laughs> I mean, if, if they're in good shape, great. And if they're not, I'll take the digital. Yeah, well, you know, by the way, because it's way, way harder for your mom to throw out all your comics if they're all on your computer. Very true. Very true. It's a good point. But that's so, true, the well, smell of comics. Red makes a good point. There's something about that smell of comics when you're reading it. There's just something that takes you back to your childhood. Yeah, but like Red is sitting there talking about um, like the smell of comics, like that's a good thing. And y'all know that you've been seen those comics and like, they don't smell good. <laughs> it's like buying comics from somebody who smokes or somebody who's got more than one cat or et cetera. Like, Doing well, the old comics, comics had that newsprint smell, which you felt like you were getting high on, like at Sharpies during school. It takes you back, and you're all happy. And everyone knows that you used to have the Xerox paper at school that really had that smell, and you really would get yeah. a little Yeah, I did Definitely like that old Xerox the paper. Definitely going to principal's office, great. getting high at school. So, anyway, if I understand, and tell me if I'm wrong, because I could be wrong in this, but uh, all right, so this is this is good news. Is there more news? Is there a section we're supposed to, are we, maybe this, this is the check it out segments. Again, I'm, I'm your substitute comic book school teacher. 
Usually Here, I'll this give you is something very important. I'll be writing Mr. Scalera a full report on how all of you did. I know that Mike's going to love this about Dolly Parton. Oh, boy. Who doesn't love Dolly Parton? Yeah, she's, she's okay. Sure. Seems like a nice lady. What have you got against Dolly Parton? I don't have anything against her. It's just, it's just you know, people are always like, oh, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's, she's nice, you know. It's... All right, I guess moving on. <laughs> That's off the show. Unless they wanted me to write for that, then I'd be like, this is the greatest comic that's ever been released. Battleground is... artist. Yep. Yep. Releases a new comic book. And this has been do uh, on Kickstarter, making some waves and making some news. And it, his older brother's MP3 player was apparently the inspiration. So that's kind of cool to see up and coming artists. And speaking of up and coming artists, there's something about local comic book shops. Hmm. Led me to a debut feature in the secret headquarters. It's a haunt in uh, LA. So I was going to ask you guys, what was the comic book shop or how did you get the comics that you read when you were growing up? Some people said that they had to sneak when they were kids. What about you two? Was that something you had to sneak or hide from being called a nerd? Because I grew up in the 80s and be, being a comic book nerd was not a good thing. You, you didn't get props <laughs> for it. No, you didn't. Grew up in the 80s. Michael, yeah. I'll let you go first. Uh, I did not have to, to hide it. I mean, I didn't really even think about it. I went down to my local uh, convenience store. And they were always mm -hmm. on the, the spinner rack. And I would just pick out the ones I wanted and bring them home and read them. And then eventually I did the uh, mail order ones, which was much easier. Yeah, I was uh, yeah, enjoyed going down to the store and pulling out the comics from the rack. It's a good time. Yeah, um, the first couple I read were um, at the local drugstore news, uh, you know, newsstand. You, do anybody remember newsstand? And they were... Um, but again, it, it was a situation of, of, uh, and I would read various ones and uh, this was, they were very intimidating to me because like the letters to the editor, this was back when that was like a very thick, you know, um, yeah, it was just, <laughs> you know, people would sit, be sitting there discussing continuity and going knee deep. It was very cultish for lack of a better term with love in my heart. Um, but I like the characters and, you know, I don't have the traditional, um, comic, comic store experience. You know, I came in, I got them through newsstands. I got them. I got the collected books. I got the reprints. Um, you know, there was the Wonder Woman TV series. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was a good one. So, and then, you know. But this one's apparently a secret headquarters. Nice. Is that in downtown LA? Silver Lake? Silver Lake? If you, you know no. Silver Lake, Mike? I do know where that is. Well, you've got a new Comic Con to check out. Of, I mean, a new comic book shop to check out. Yeah, then I'd have to leave the house, and that's no good. All right. Well, put on this, pants. Some, this, is some, this is something you don't have to leave the house for, and you cannot. You can be pantsless if you'd like. Watch <laughs> Superman Lois as they've been renewed for season three. And of course, they're trying to play mm. basketball at while we're doing this. But that's pretty good news considering how much CW looks to be getting rid of shows if the rumors are true. So this is one that will. Oh, Rob cut out. Oh, well. <laughs> so, so yay, that was news. Thanks. Thanks, news. But reading the notes that Mr. Scalera left, um, let's see. Well, we've, was that the check this out segment or was that just news? No, that was just news. The check this out segment is, as uh, you saw in the notes, something fun and educational. Yeah. Well, people were probably were commenting. It's like Dolly Parton has a huge reading initiative. And the fact that she's doing comic books makes me wonder, um, makes me wonder if she would be like, 
taking the comic books and making them part of her reading initiative, like, you know, because there have been comics in the past that have been designed to promote literacy. True. Maybe we could get her as a guest on the show. Sure. You have contact with Dolly, don't you? No. (laughs) I bet you could if you tried. Could we, could we promise to make her a robot chicken? Um, I could, I could draw her as a robot chicken. It would be terrible, but you know, that's all I could promise. I would love to see that. What, what? Rob's getting back in right now. I just wanted to mention like as a literacy program in comics, it's just funny that Rob cut out right at that point. Cause that's his big thing. <laughs> That's the way of the internet. The internet decided I didn't belong on anymore and they took me off. I'd made a joke about Dolly Parton and that was the end of it. Yep. This is why you you, Dolly Parton's one of the folks who hold up the sky all. Like you do not mess with Dolly. I, I apologize to Dolly and the principal's office that I just had to leave. So we are at 31 minutes. So now if you have anything to share, guys, feel free to jump on and share it and then we can yeah. wrap up the show. Yeah, so we're looking at wrap up. So a couple of things I think are interesting. First of all, you're just turning out. I mean, I don't mean this unkindly. So if it comes out that way, apologies. But it does sound you're talking about a thick skin that you just got to churn the ideas. Now, have there ever been? So first question is, that have there ever been ideas that like initially you thought were good, but then after everybody's commenting, you realize no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. OK. and 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 do you think having the thick skin and being open to the criticism, listening to the criticism, has that um, has that made you better? I think so, because you know, if if you have a thin skin and people are you know saying this isn't funny or whatever, then you're just going to be angry and and hurt and all the, all that because you're like you don't know what you're talking about, and then you get up and you you just storm out of the room. But, and that's you know, been that's and storming out of the room is bad for your career development. Yes, is what you're yes. saying. Usually okay. they don't that's let you take back away in. <laughs> so so it's bad, but it, it is. And usually their comments after you go back and read it again, you can see okay they were correct in that aspect of it. And then you you know you make some changes, and you see what's funny. And hopefully they are giving you comments that are like constructive criticism, like. You know, not just like, wow, this sucks, but like, oh, there's you know. there's some of those too. Yeah, this is just awful. And then you move on. <laughs> but yeah, but usually if, if they think there's something that can be uh, better or how they can, you can salvage the, the idea. Yeah, they'll, they'll throw that out. And, and has anybody ever come back to you and said, you know what, you said this idea, I didn't like it, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about it or and your robe. So, you know, we're going to retry it. Yep, they have. They just say res- resubmit it again, and you do. There have been – I did a sketch a few years ago where I resubmitted it seven times. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it so eventually did get it. in. Yeah. And was there crying? Was there – did you do a lot of crying? Uh, there's there no begging? crying in the office, but yes, on the on the way home, there there would be tears shed. Oh, okay. You have to Is pull over the side of baseball? the road. crying baseball? weeping there is no crying in baseball so what would be the one you know what's one thing you wish someone had told you earlier in the career is it about like the thick skin is it about like knowing ahead of time how to format the uh, the scripts etc uh well yes if you're going into whatever industry you're going into no was it the robe was what it the you robe? need the robe the robe has helped i would say two things one get a comfortable robe a warm, mm-hmm. comfortable robe, and know you know what you're looking for. Like you said, if you're if you're going into the the screenwriting um, area, know how to format the scripts, read a bunch of scripts, know how they do them, know how a story is broken down and told. Yeah, get all the knowledge you can before you jump in, and it's a trial by fire, and then you have to leave the room crying. Yeah, but then realize you don't know everything. So like when people are giving you, when, you know, you don't know everything about, so if like people are giving you feedback, listen to the technical aspects of it. You know, some yes. of it may not be right, but some of it may be. Yep. And as you, you can know. see from earlier, I don't know everything about Aquaman. So I just, we keep <laughs> making jokes about this robe. I keep having this sort of like, 
And then, you know, in the MCU, not in the comic books, but in the MCU, they had, with the Doctor Strange movies, they had this whole thing about, like, the robe chose him, which people who know Doctor Strange um, comic that's continuity not, know that's not that, the way it was. That's not a robe either. It's not a... It's his, I just have this vision of you doing a robe, you know, where your robe is a mystical robe. It's an artifact with powers. That oh, I wish. You. A mystical magical terry cloth robe that you can yeah. never wash or else it loses its power yeah that's it's it usually the the power of the robe is that it makes me sleepy yeah and no cape yeah no cape <laughs> so to quote as uh red pointed out edna mold mode edna mode that's what I said, wasn't it? I think you said mold. Yep. Mold. Because we're now back to talking about the paper. <laughs> the paper comes. There you go, bring it around full circle. So, did you guys want to do the check this out before we uh, head out? Do we have a check this have out? A glass. I'm happy to pull it up. You don't have no. a check this out? <gasps> there you go. This check out. this out. Mike, do you have a check this out this week? I do. Uh, if you can open that folder I sent you. I can. There should be a Yay! check this out uh, graphic thingy book cover in there. There you go. The War of Art. That is a fantastic book that that will get you beyond. Like if, you're, if your writer's blocked, you don't really know how to get by what you're doing. And you're like, I chose this profession and I suck at it and I don't want to try anymore. Read this book and it will help. It, it gives great ideas. It is uh, uh, a book that will, I think, inspire anyone who wants to write to continue writing, even if you feel bad and think you What suck. if they don't have talent? Will that, you know? Well, talent well if you're someone like me who has no talent for writing fiction. Uh, have you ever tried? Yes. Oh, and and uh, you should try again. <laughs> <laughs> Read the book and then try again. How's that? It's the I'll encouragement give you that we bit all of advice. need. Try again. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. So, my check this out. If I have a check this out, is I have no graphics. It's completely self-aggrandizing. It's like, hey, come, feel free to check out the com, com nationcom Um. Yeah, we were doing weekly um, things for a while. I had to stop because um, I had some family health issues. Yeah, had some people in the hospital and, you know, had to take care of that. But everybody's ha happy, hail, hearty, and now we're going to try. And you own Tuesday nights, but I'm hoping maybe I could rent a, rent a little bit of it. <laughs> so... So anyway, the takeaway for those of you, the takeaway is you're going to get criticism. You're going to get shot down, but like folks don't you know why you're doing it. I mean, you know, it's, it's so you can buy really fun, luxurious robes. Yes. You know, and many comics. In whatever format you want them. <laughs> $2.4 million worth of comics. Yes. Buy one of those and then sell it. That's the idea. Buy one of those and then like, you know, do you remember when you would like roll up the comic and maybe put it in your back or like never did pocket? that. No. 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 Never did, did you that. Take the comic and kind of throw it in a bag. No, I didn't it was, you know, I brought it home and I'd put it in a stack and they'd sit in the bottom of my closet. Eventually they got put into uh, you know, boxes. The sleeves. But, that was, no, I never did the sleeves. I was never into the sleeve thing, although I probably should have because then they would be worth more and I could sell them for $2.4 million. Yeah, well, but they're your personal comics. Shouldn't that be worth something? Yeah, good point. So, <laughs> so I guess this is where we're wrapping up because normally we do, I guess, 30 minutes, now we're 46. So just consider this being held after school. Because oh. y'all were bad. 
you you this is comic school detention. <laughs> Five demerits for everyone. So go ahead, do the wrap up. Okay, the wrap up. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media, <laughs> and uh, then I will roll the end credits. Go ahead, Ruth. Um, wow, social media combination.com. Just look around. I, <laughs> who wants to find me on social media? Go find Mike. Go stalk Mike. Um, you know. Yeah, okay. Go find Mike. Mike. Where can we find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on the Twitters and the Instagrams and things like that at, you know, that thing, Mike Fasolo. At the, at, you can, at the, in the Snapchat and the AMP. No, not on Snapchat. I'm only on really uh, Twitter and Instagram. Okay. At the <laughs> Facebook. It. No, not on Facebook. Anybody on AMP? Anyone? I've heard of me? AMP. Oh. Uh... Well, that's that's why check this out. Amp is a new thing that Amazon is doing. It's music based. It's kind mm. of fun. A M P. Check it out. It has nothing to do with comics at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thanks very much, guys. All right. Well, thank you. <sighs> <laughs>